All right, hello everyone. Welcome back to another video. Uh, today we're going to be looking at this 2013 Ford F-150. Uh, now the problem with this vehicle uh, is the customer is complaining of a intermittent um, no crank. Um, and when the intermittent no crank happens, uh, he states that when he takes the key out of the ignition, the, um, the backlights on the uh, dashboard stay lit up and the headlights stay lit up and it eventually kills the battery. Um, the only way he's able to get it to stop is to cycle the key or, or, or sometimes it just stops doing it on its own. The lights just randomly shut off and everything starts working normally again. Um, so kind of a weird issue, but uh, I think what we're going to have to do first is hook the scan tool up to it and scan the vehicle and uh, see if we have any codes or any uh, communication issues. Okay, so here we have the IDS hooked up to the vehicle and I think I'm just going to go in and attempt to uh, communicate with the body control module first. Um, that'll give us... Uh, um, in the data, you can see ignition input and uh, lighting as well. Uh, so we'll just wait and see what we got going on here. Hmm, that's kind of interesting. Okay, so we can't talk to the module. So that's uh, that'll definitely be our no start, and that uh, that would give us issues with lighting as well. Um, uh, let's just see if we can talk to the uh, instrument cluster because that's uh, another problem spot on the vehicle. Hmm. Okay, we can't talk to the uh, instrument cluster either. So it kind of looks like we, uh, we've got a communication issue with this vehicle. Um, that would explain why we don't, uh, or why we have a no start. Um, if it can't communicate with any of the modules, the body control module or the cluster uh, won't be able to pass security. Uh, so now what I'm going into here is a network test on the IDS. It's just going to uh, basically ping all the modules and let us know which ones are online, which ones are offline. Um, that'll kind of give us a good idea what we can talk to and what we can't talk to. So we just hit the play button there and it's going to uh, ping all the modules. Uh, and it looks like we have quite a few of them that are uh, that are offline there. Uh, it looks like the steering column control module uh, didn't clock in once. Uh, PCM didn't clock in twice. Power steering control module didn't clock in once, uh, but they all appear to be um, communicating intermittently. Anyways, it looks like that uh, instrument panel is uh, continuously offline. It uh, We can't communicate with him at all. Now it looks like somehow uh, the BCM got disabled there. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't even checking for the BCM and that could be uh, just because it was offline right to start with. So I just unclicked the uh, disable button uh, there or unchecked the disable box and you can see now that the uh, the body control module is not clocking in whatsoever um, a lot of weird stuff going on here a lot of the modules are, are uh, clocking in and not clocking in um, looks like the instrument panel and that BCM are, uh, are the worst offenders here um, doesn't appear that they're clocking in at all right now so uh, we just went ahead and paused it again there um, just because I think we've uh, we've seen everything we need to see here. Um, it, it definitely looks like we have some sort of bus issue. Uh, the fact that uh, some of the other ones are uh, clocking in intermittently kind of tells us that uh, we've got some sort of uh, issue with the signature on the bus. Um, so I think what we're going to have to do next is uh, just scope the uh, scope the CAN bus and see exactly uh, what the signature looks like and. Uh, if the signature is messed up, then we're going to have to see whether it's a module messing the um, signature up or whether we have some sort of wiring issue. Okay, so here we have our CAN bus circuit. Uh, this was taken at the DLC. Um, as you can see right away, it doesn't look right. Uh, let's just zoom in here and see what we got going on. All right, so blue is our can low, red looks like it's our can high, and uh, the can low doesn't look super great. Uh, can high definitely looks messed up, so uh, th there's definitely an issue with our can bus here. Um, now it's probably coming from one of two places, either a circuit issue uh, or a, uh, like a wiring issue, or <clears throat> there's a module that's uh, pulling the bus down. Um, so I think what we're going to have to do, uh, let, let's go and take a look at the same 
uh, network, but at one of the modules that we can't communicate with. So the um, instrument panel is going to be the easiest to get at. Um, so I went and grabbed it here, and uh, it looks the same at the instrument cluster. Now, the uh, red and uh, red and blue are can high and low, can high speed, uh, or high speed can. Um, the green and yellow are um, medium speed can. Uh, so th this is kind of what this should look like. Um, so medium speed can is what our high speed can should look like. Um, I'm just going to zoom in here again on everything. So that's that's kind of what it should look like and uh, what ours looks like. So there's definitely an issue there. Um, so I think what we're going to have to do now is um, determine whether we have a circuit issue, uh, like a wiring issue or a module issue. And the easiest way to do that is just start unplugging modules um, and see which one makes the bus better. If uh, the bus doesn't get any better, then uh, we're going to have to go digging through wiring um, and see if we can find an issue. So uh, lucky for us, this is a base model truck, so there's not a whole lot here uh, to unplug. Um, I do have the wiring diagram here. Uh, so our modules that we have on this truck are uh, the PCM restraints module, ABS module, um, occupancy classification system. Uh, we don't have a parkade module. I've confirmed that. Uh, we've got power steering control module. Uh, we do not have a transfer case module, it's a two-wheel drive truck, uh, but we do have the steering control, column control module in the instrument panel. Uh, and then, of course, we have the BCM up here. Um, now, this is all our medium speed bus, these uh, uh, violet and orange and green orange. Those are medium speed. We're not going to worry about that because the medium speed bus looks fine. Uh, but our white and uh, blue and white here, or white and white and blue, are the high speed can, and uh, that is our issue bus. Um, so it looks like the BCM is the gateway here, but uh, I'm just going to go ahead and start unplugging modules one at a time and uh, see if anything gets better. All right, so I started unplugging a bunch of modules and uh, pretty much unplugged everything uh, except for the BCM, and it didn't make a difference anywhere. Um, I mean, it changed it a little bit, uh, but not uh not nothing it was still messed up no matter what i unplugged um you don't plug the ecm and it would change a little bit i think probably because of the terminating resistor in there so when you unplugged it it got rid of that and uh, messed it up even worse but it didn't make it any better um now when i went to go and unplug the bcm um i had to move some wiring out of the way and i noticed when i grabbed one of the harnesses the truck came to life and everything started dinging and I took a look at the scope and I saw this and I wasn't entirely sure what had happened. I figured, okay, we have some sort of wiring issue or connection issue. Um, but as you can see here, the, the CAN bus went from really bad to almost completely normal. Um, so that's, that's what it's supposed to look like. Um, now, now I, uh, I have a clip that I took um, when right after I uh, discovered this issue and uh, I'm going to play it for you next. It kind of explains everything that uh, that happened and what ultimately um, fixed this vehicle. Okay, so we've got our F-150 here that uh, is a no crank, no start. Uh, as you can see, we have a bunch of stuff uh, ripped out here. Um, uh, due to the CAN bus being messed up, we've had to unplug uh, every module in here to make sure that it wasn't uh, a module messing it up. But um, as you can see here, it's acting up. Um, you can hear the uh, BCM clicking and stuff like that. Uh, when you try to start it, the headlights are staying on. Even uh, key off and out, the headlights stay on. If you open and close the door, they, they stay on 24 seven, they'll kill the battery. Um, so I'm just gonna turn it back on here. Now, I believe I may have found the issue. Um, I was kind of messing around with the wiring down here. And uh, when I moved the harness, it uh, came to life so when I was uh, messing around with some of the wires here I noticed this green connector here it was just sitting like it was just sitting in there like that I, I just had to pull on it like I just did there and it came right out kind of like that so I uh, went and shoved it back in and uh, we come back to life starts. Now I'm just going to uh, unplug it again here to show you what happens with it unplugged. I'll just 
just kind of sit it back in there like that. Put the key back in, turn it on, and uh, nothing happens. You click it in, and it comes back to life. Okay, now just to kind of explain what, uh, what happened there. Um, here we have our picture of our connectors here. This green one is the one that was just sitting in there. Uh, when, you went, when I went and pulled on it, it just pulled right out. It wasn't plugged in. Um, we've kind of determined that it's uh, connector C214 here in this diagram. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate it. Uh, the, the, the connector views or the connector location views are never exact to how they are in the truck. Um, you can kind of see here that they're not really not really exactly how they show you, but we did confirm that this is connector uh, C214. Um, now, if we go back to the wiring diagrams here, you can see that uh, we have our communication lines going through connector C214. Uh, so that would explain our communication issues and uh, probably could explain a lot of our other issues as well. But if we go over here to the uh, connector view, uh, this is C214. You can see there are a lot of circuits that go through there. Um, they don't tell you, which kind of, it's kind of annoying, but they don't tell you what circuit it is on the connector views. But um, if you go down here and, uh, I don't know why that's open, get rid of that. Um, just take a look at power distribution. Oops, too far. You can see here we have uh, C214, and that's that's our start input to the uh, uh, to the PCM. It runs through that uh, through that connector, uh, so that would uh, definitely keep this thing from starting. But um, yeah, that, that connector was influencing um, a lot of different, or was affecting, sorry, uh, was affecting a lot of different things on this car, and that kind of explains why we had. Uh, multiple issues with the, the light staying on, the dash not lighting up, the communication issues, the no crank. Um, so that, that kind of explains everything that uh, that we're seeing now. Um, when, when I talked to the customer, he had just had someone put a BCM in this thing. Uh, there were some corroded uh, pins on it, because uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys know these trucks. Um, the windshields never leak on them, right? So it was full of water down here and uh, a lot of the pins got green and someone, I'm not sure who it was, but uh, they replaced the BCM and uh, I'm, I'm assuming they had all these connectors disconnected for some reason and uh, just didn't push this green one in far enough. Um, so at the end of the day, all it really took to fix this thing was plugging that connector in. Kind of took us a while to find it, but a relatively simple issue and uh, the customer was happy because he didn't have to buy any parts. So um, truck's fixed and uh, customer's good to go. If you like this video, please let us know by following us or liking us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. And if you want access to more in-depth uh, training videos, please visit our website at www.autoaid.ca. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video.